The need for the beta-1 factor is caused by the variation in the shape of the stress-strain curve for different concrete strengths, as shown in this figure. For concrete strengths up to 4,000 PSI, the shape and centroid of the actual concrete stress block can be reasonably approximated by a rectangular stress block with a uniform stress of 0.85 F'C and a depth of 0.85 times the depth to the neutral axis. That is, the approximation is made with beta 1 equal to 0.85. Higher strength concretes have a more linear shape with less inelastic behavior. For a good approximation of the stress block for concretes with compressive strengths greater than 4000 PSI, the ratio beta 1 of the rectangular stress block depth to the neutral axis depth needs to be reduced. We are now ready to determine the nominal flexural strength of a reinforced concrete member or cross-section. As previously noted, the nominal flexural strength must be based on equilibrium and strain compatibility using the design assumptions that were just discussed. Let's apply these principles to the strain and force diagrams derived under the design assumptions, assuming that the reinforcement yields before the concrete crushes. The significance of the reinforcement yielding prior to the concrete crushing will be discussed shortly. From force equilibrium of the section, the compressive force in the concrete, capital C, must be equal to the tensile force in the reinforcement, capital T. The compressive force, capital C, is equal to the area of the equivalent compression zone, which is 0.85 F'C times the area. B times A. The tensile force in the reinforcing steel is equal to the total area of the steel, A sub S, times the yield stress of the reinforcement. Setting capital C equal to capital T results in a solution for the depth of the equivalent stress block, A. The nominal flexural strength of the section can be obtained from moment equilibrium. Moments can be summed about any point on the section and set equal to zero. However, it's usually convenient to sum the moments about either capital C or capital T. Thus, for moment equilibrium, the nominal flexural strength, M sub N, of a reinforced concrete section with only tension reinforcement can be determined from the equation shown here. Substituting the expression for the distance A from force equilibrium the nominal flexural strength can also be expressed as shown here. These equations can be used to determine the nominal flexural strength of one-way slabs, where it is common to design such slabs as one-foot wide design strips, that is, taking B equal to 12 inches. The nominal flexural strength of flanged sections and rectangular sections with compression reinforcement can be derived in a similar fashion. The PCA notes on ACI 31805 has a comprehensive discussion on how to determine the nominal flexural strengths in these cases. More information on this publication can be found by clicking on the resource link. As was previously noted, the equation for the nominal flexural strength was based on the assumption that the reinforcing steel yields before the concrete crushes. We will see that it is advantageous for the steel to yield prior to the concrete crushing. We will also discuss what is meant by a tension, a balanced, and a compression type of failure for a flexural section. Consider a reinforced concrete beam with only tension reinforcement. The amount of tension reinforcement in the section is such that, at failure, the reinforcing steel will yield in tension before the concrete crushes in compression. The relationship between the bending moment and the curvature of this beam is plotted to failure. It is evident from the diagram that the beam has a long plastic region. That is, it exhibits a ductile response up to failure. This is commonly referred to as a tension failure. Let us now assume that additional reinforcing steel is added to the section, with all of the other parameters remaining the same. Let us also assume that at failure, the reinforcing steel yields at exactly the same time the concrete crushes. This is commonly referred to as a balanced failure. In this case, the strain in the extreme compression fiber of the concrete 
reaches the assumed crushing strain of 0 0.003 at the same time that the strain in the reinforcing steel reaches the yield strain epsilon y. Finally, let's add more reinforcing steel to the section, more than the amount of a balanced reinforcement. In such cases, the concrete in the extreme compression fiber reaches the assumed crushing strain of 0 0.003 prior to the reinforcing steel yielding. The moment curvature diagram for such a beam does not have the ductile post-yielding response displayed by the beam with an amount of reinforcement smaller than the balanced amount. This type of failure is called a compression failure. If overloaded, this beam may fail suddenly, in a brittle manner, without any warning. This is opposed to beams with smaller amounts of reinforcing steel that fail in a more ductile manner, and which typically exhibit large deformations prior to collapse. In such cases, it is expected that there will be ample warning prior to failure. To ensure that brittle failure does not occur, the code requires that all beams and one-way slabs have properties that ensure that tension failure will occur. This will be more fully discussed later in this section. A balanced strain condition exists at a cross-section when the maximum strain in the extreme compression fiber of the concrete just reaches 0 0.003 simultaneously with the yield strain in the reinforcement. This condition is illustrated in this figure, where the appropriate variables now have the subscript B to identify the balanced condition. Also note that the distance from the extreme compression fiber to the centroid of the extreme layer of the longitudinal tensile steel is designated as D sub T. With only one layer of steel, which is depicted here, the distance DT is the same as the distance from the extreme compression fiber to the centroid of the longitudinal tensile steel, which is usually designated as D. The significance of this definition will become evident shortly. We will now discuss the balance strain condition in more detail, and then introduce the concepts of compression controlled and tension controlled sections. The ratio of the neutral axis depth, C sub B, to extreme depth, D sub T, to produce a balanced strain condition in a section with only tensile reinforcement may be obtained by applying strain compatibility conditions. Referring to the figure, the equation for C sub B divided by D sub T is applicable for a linear strain condition. More simply, it has been obtained from similar triangles. For grade 60 reinforcement, section 10.3.3 permits the yield strain of the reinforcement to be taken as 0.002 as opposed to 0.00207 which would be obtained by dividing the yield stress of 60 KSI by the modulus of elasticity of 29,000 KSI. Substituting 0.002 into this equation gives the ratio for C sub B to D sub T as equal to 0.6 Note that this value applies to all sections with grade 60 reinforcement, and not just to rectangular sections. According to section 10.3.3, a section is compression controlled if the net tensile strain in the extreme tension steel, epsilon sub t, is less than or equal to the compression controlled strain limit when the concrete in compression reaches its assumed strain limit, epsilon sub u, of 0 0.003. The compression controlled strain limit is the net tensile strain in the reinforcement at balanced strain conditions. As previously noted, it is permitted to set the compression controlled limit equal to 0 0.002 for grade 60 reinforcement. This is also permitted for pre-stressed reinforcement. Note that when other grades of reinforcement are used, the compression controlled strain limit is not equal to 0 0.002. According to section 10.3.4, sections are tension controlled when the net tensile strain in the extreme tension steel, epsilon sub t, is greater than or equal to 0 0.005, just as the compression strain in the concrete reaches its assumed strain limit, epsilon sub u, of 0 0.003. 
sections with epsilon t between the compression controlled strain limit and 0 0.005 are said to be in a transition region between compression controlled and tension controlled sections. Shown here are the strain conditions at the limit for tension controlled sections. In this case, all appropriate parameters are given a subscript of T. As will be shown later, this is an important limit when determining the strength reduction factor of a section. The equations shown here have been derived from strain compatibility and equilibrium. They may prove useful in setting up design parameters for tension controlled sections at a strain limit of 0.005 as a function of the compressive strength of concrete and the yield stress of reinforcement. A concrete section with reinforcement greater than the balanced reinforcement will fail in a brittle manner, which is undesirable. A maximum reinforcement ratio for beams and slabs is not given directly in ACI 318.05. Instead, section 10.3.5 requires that non-pre-stressed flexural members must be designed such that the net tensile strain in the extreme layer of longitudinal tensile steel at nominal strength, epsilon sub t, is greater than or equal to 0 0.004. In essence, this requirement limits the amount of flexural reinforcement that can be provided in a section. Previously, limits on reinforcement were based on a percentage of the balanced reinforcement ratio. In particular, the former limit prior to the 2002 edition of ACI 318 was 75% of the balanced reinforcement ratio. Using a strain compatibility analysis for 4000 PSI concrete and grade 60 reinforcement, the maximum reinforcement ratio according to the latest ACI requirements is 0 0.0206. Previously this limit was 0 0.0214 which corresponds to a strain equal to 0 0.00376. It will be shown later that it is almost always advantageous to limit epsilon sub t to a minimum of 0 0.005, even though higher amounts of reinforcement producing lower tensile strains are permitted. In cases where member size is limited and extra strength is needed, it is usually best to use compression reinforcement to limit the net tensile strain so that the section is tension controlled. Design strength, in general, is equal to the nominal strength of the section multiplied by the strength reduction factor. For flexural design, the design strength is equal to the strength reduction factor, phi, times the nominal moment strength. We will now examine the requirements on how to determine the phi factor for flexure. The phi factor to use for flexure depends on whether the section is tension controlled, compression controlled, or in the transition region. For tension controlled sections, phi is equal to 0 0.9. The strength of tension controlled sections is clearly controlled by the strength of the reinforcement, which is less variable than the strength of the concrete. The phi factor for compression controlled sections depends on the type of lateral reinforcement that is confining the longitudinal reinforcement. Members with spiral reinforcement conforming to section 10.9.3 are assigned a phi factor equal to 0 0.7, while all other reinforced members are assigned a lower value of 0 0.65. Members with spiral reinforcement have greater ductility or toughness, which is reflected in the greater phi factor. In general, phi factors for compression controlled sections are smaller than those for tension controlled sections since they have less ductility and are more sensitive to variations in concrete strength. For sections in the transition region between tension controlled and compression controlled sections the phi factor may be linearly increased from that for compression controlled sections to 0 0.9 as epsilon t increases from the compression controlled strain limit to 0 0.005. The variation of phi with the net tensile strain, epsilon sub t, for grade 60 reinforcement is shown in this graph. The equations can be used to determine phi in the transition region. With the information that has been developed in this section, we are now prepared to design reinforced concrete beams and one-way slabs for flexure. 
for design or investigation of members subjected to flexure, the nominal strength of the cross-section, M sub n, must be reduced by the strength reduction factor, phi, to obtain the design strength of the section, phi M sub n. The design strength must be greater than or equal to the required strength, M sub u. In addition to satisfying this basic strength requirement, serviceability requirements for deflection control and proper distribution of flexural reinforcement for crack control must also be satisfied. All of these requirements will be covered in this section. Before introducing the design procedure for flexure, a few important items will be introduced that will help in the overall design process. The equation for the nominal flexural strength of a rectangular concrete section with only tension reinforcement was derived in the previous section. This equation can be rewritten in terms of the reinforcement ratio, rho, which is equal to the area of steel, A sub S, divided by the beam width, B, times the effective depth, D. A nominal strength coefficient of resistance, R sub N, can be obtained by dividing each side of the nominal flexural strength equation by BD squared. Assuming that B and D are already known, the required reinforcement ratio, rho, can be determined by solving the quadratic equation for R sub N. Thus, for a given concrete section, the required area of tension reinforcement can be obtained from this equation for a given M sub U. A procedure to determine the cross-sectional dimensions B and D will be discussed shortly. This equation can also be used to determine the design strength of a section for a given area of reinforcing steel. This graph shows the relationship between rho and R sub n for grade 60 reinforcement and various values of F prime C. The curves end at the point where the net tensile strain in the reinforcing steel reaches the upper limit of 0.004. This graph is for 4,000 psi concrete and grade 60 reinforcement. It shows the effect of the strength reduction factor phi on the design strength. In particular, it shows what happens when the limit for tension controlled sections with phi equal to 0.9 is passed. Similar curves can be generated for other material strengths. The reinforcement ratio corresponding to phi equal to 0.9 is rho sub t, as discussed previously. Once more reinforcement above rho sub t is added to the section, the strength gain is minimal, up to the maximum reinforcement ratio, rho max. The reason for this is that any gain in strength with higher reinforcement ratios is canceled by the reduction of phi when the net strains are less than 0.005. Therefore, flexural members should be designed as tension controlled sections whenever possible. We will now present a design procedure for sections with tension reinforcement only. Discussed our methods to determine the dimensions of the cross section and the flexural reinforcement to satisfy both strength and serviceability requirements of ACI 31805. Procedures for beams with compression reinforcement and for flange sections can be found in the PCA publication PCA Notes on ACI 31805, a simplified design method derived from the ACI 318 provisions will also be presented.